Okay. Here we have our moon lander rocket. About to launch it. This is <laughs> my third try at making this video. Just human error, really. Me crashing into the moon at high velocities. I've done this lots. <laughs> I don't want you to think that I've never landed on the moon before. This isn't my first time, but we'll just see. Now, let's talk about this rocket a little bit. As you can see, I have asparagus. These outer tanks, which all that means, if you're new to this, is you see how when I decouple those, I have full fuel. That's because I used each stack and its reciprocal stack, the one on the other side that weighs it out, evenly. So, as you can see, I'm using this fuel and this fuel and then this fuel and then this fuel evenly. So these stacks are fueling this engine. Basically. Not basically, it's exactly what's happening. Um, so these three engines are going to get me up to 10,000 meters and I'm going to turn along my 90 degree axis. And that's the direction that Kerbin is spinning, so it actually takes less fuel to get in orbit. So here I am at 10,000 meters and I turn down the 90 degree axes. Wait for a second. Lose those. So now I have f this whole stack of fuel and uh, very helpful to asparagus your rockets to get them into orbit. Um, takes a little bit of effort but it's worth every bit of it. So now we're just going to get our rocket, our apoapsis of our launch to about, I'm going to get it to 75,000 meters. You need to get it to orbital height, orbital distance. I don't know what the term for that is. I'm not a astrophysicist, but you need to get it to about anything above 60,000 meters. Um, you can get an orbit lower than that. You can get an orbit at 44,000 meters, but you're having air resistance there, so eventually your rocket will fall to the ground. So you want to get it outside of the atmosphere, your apoapses. You just keep going, just keep going until it's out of the atmosphere completely, which happens at 60,000 meters where you lose all air resistance. But you can't do space fast forward until about 68 to 69,000 meters. So I'm going to mine to about 75,000, just so I have some leeway. Um, so we're almost there. And as you can see, I'm not following my thrust vector completely because I still want it to go up. 75. Okay. Now we just wait. We're still going up. Um, if you're completely new to Kerbal, there's a few things you need to know. This yellow circle is the direction in which I'm heading. This line is the direction in which I'm pointed. So my rocket's going this way, right? Like, if we look at it this way, my rocket's going this way, pretty much, and I'm going up. And my vector's slowly but surely, cur slowly but surely curving around the 90 degree as you can see my orbit zeros, or not zeros out, but equals out until I'm going pretty much exactly horizontal. That's what the apoapsis is, is pretty much exactly horizontal. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, and I know a lot of you will, but this is where I'm going to have the most effect on my orbit. So what I'm going to do is move down to my thrust or move down to my orbital vector and thrust along it or near it. So right there is good. And out of fuel. So we switch.
I don't know if this is correct or not, but I try to be as close to the apoapsis as possible. So I move it backwards or forwards depending on where I am. If you want to move it back towards you, you move up the 90 degree axis. And if you want to move it away from you, you move down into the red. So I'm still thrusting along my vector. I have asparagus D, so I need to get rid of those. Oh, I should have done that a long time ago. Oops. See, all that weight that I was carrying extra fundamentally altered the way I can orbit now. So I've almost got my orbit. Oh, there we go. So we are at 81 and 75. I'd say that's pretty good as a circularized orbit as far as me not using MechGem. But as you can see, the next thing uh, you want to do is set the moon as a target. Okay? The moon is now our heading, or where we're targeted. Our heading is still 90 degrees and 270 degrees depending on where we are in our orbit. But we want to be overlapping this purple dot because that means we're pointed at the moon. Okay, turn my RCS off to retain fuel. And now I'm just going to fast forward until my target vector is nearly overlapping my orbital vector. Or my target is nearly overlapping my or orbital vector. Basically, the direction I want to go is almost aligned with the direction I already am going. And then I'm going to thrust. So, I'm bringing the purple back around to the yellow circle, because that's the direction I'm heading. Right? We're going to stop it right about there. And we're not going to be directly on the purple dot in the middle, but we're going to be the same distance that the middle of the yellow circle is away from the purple dot. I don't know if that's... That's just the way I do it. It's probably a plenty another plenty of other ways to do it and do it correctly but basically I'm just trying to pull my tar my orbital vector onto my target so I'm throwing my apoapses out I'm about to detach these other two turn my these off oh those are gone so now we just have this stack and it's full of fuel so we will get out there and uh, that's really the main purpose of asparagusing, is just to lose weight and retain a larger amount of fuel to in ratio to your thrust. Not making perfect sense tonight, but you guys get the point. So I'm going to move over a little bit to more on my purple dot. So a lot of fuel. See, a lot of fuel. Sorry, got a little thirsty there. And there we go. Now we have an intercept. So the yellow is supposed to predict what our orbit will be when we intercept, and the purple is what our orbit will be after we are flung out. So we actually won't have an orbit anymore. But we're just going to fast forward. Uh, this, is, this is my favorite part. Um, finding the moon and then watching it get closer. So cool. The curve gets smaller and the moon gets bigger. Oh, that was almost bad, guys, but uh, we worked it out. That's why I spend so much time on the map screen because it's easier for me to follow exactly what's happening. A lot of people use MechJeb. Personally, I feel like it detracts from the game for me. 
if you want to use it, by all means, use it. But I prefer not to. I don't know, I feel a greater sense of accomplishment when I don't use it. So now we're just going to get an orbit. Go down to our the opposite of our vector and just thrust in that direction. So we're actually heading that way. But since we're thrusting that way, we're slowing down and we're going to get an orbit. Let's get it below, uh, say, 375. And you know what, since I'm on the light side of the moon, uh, I don't normally do this. Normally I get an orbit and then position myself from my orbit. But since I'm already on the light side of the moon and I'm just doing a tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and slow all the way down to zero so I'm just falling at the moon. And then we'll continue our landing from there because I don't really need to position since I'm not trying to go anywhere specific besides, you know, the light side. I don't ever recommend landing on the dark side of the moon. If you've done it enough and you have lights on your spaceship, by all means do it. But I've landed on the, mu the moon quite a few times and still never had a successful dark side landing. Just slowing down to about zero. And now we're just falling. We're way out, so... I'm going to slow down all the way again. So all I did there was just fast forward until I got under 100,000 meters, but I'm going 500 meters a second, so I really, really need to slow down. Otherwise, I'm going to crash and die at far too fast of speed. Just slowing down here. Jebediah is excited. He's always excited, though. That's not really saying much. Jebediah Kerman, companion to the stars. I think he's everybody's favorite Kerbal, don't you? Oh, he's mine at least. So now I'm just going to drop down to about 35,000, no, way farther than I meant to go, but we'll still be okay. It's a little trick I picked up. You watch it, and you see when it disappears at what height it disappears or what distance away from you and then you subtract that from the amount of distance you are away from the surface or whatever your altitude says you are and that will tell you how far away you are oh so the surface is at about a thousand meters because it disappeared at about seven seven something so now we know how high the surface is because it's not going to be at zero and that's important to know uh oh the cats are fighting again hey stop it sorry 
From this point on, we don't really want to get above 100 meters per second, and each time we do, we're going to slow all the way down. I don't know if this is the best way to land, but it's my most successful way of landing. Excellent. Now, I'm sorry, but from this point on, you can't fast forward. Um, and if you notice, I don't really have, I don't have a ladder. Because the moon's gravity is so low that you can actually pretty much just fly um, and grab onto things. So I'm not too worried about getting back in my ship. Because I'm definitely going to get out and plant a flag and then fly back. But we'll see. Talk goes the clock even for the doctor. Okay, I'm getting pretty fast here and I'm closing on the surface. So I'm going to slow down again. Just because I'm not entirely sure how much room I have. Should be getting very close. God. Sorry, I didn't say anything there, but I almost messed it all up. And just FYI, you're not going to be able to land really ever on anything greater than about six meters per second. And there we go. Landed. <laughs> There's your moon tutorial. Let's get out real quick. And uh, let's plant our Cerberus flag. Here we go, guys. Cerberus. I can't think of anything to write on the plaque, so whatever. But I'm gonna pull our jetpack out. If you guys don't know. WASD and Q and E are the steering, but shift and control are up and down. So uh, oops, not pressing F. Oops. Okay, here we go. I did need a ladder. Apparently not. Woohoo! Jebediah Kerman can plant a flag. Okay, so we're landing on the moon. And now let's get back and try to land on Kerman. Taking off. Nice. 
Now that I'm in the air. I guess I can't target Kerbin. That's weird. Trying to get back now. Sorry for the silence. I'm just kind of focusing. For some reason, it won't let me target Kerbin. It shouldn't be too much of a problem, but I'm going to kill my thrust real quick. Fast forward. <coughs> Until we're out here. Blah, blah, blah. Then we're going to thrust along this. Almost, 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 and there we go. So, you know, I have way more than enough fuel to get back. Now we just escaped the moon's orbit. I hope this is instructional. Sometimes I feel like I'm not quite as instructional as I'd like to be. But... I feel like there's a better way to do this, too. I'm not quite sure what it is. So, we're here. Let's get it in closer. Can I... Actually, I should be able to. I'm going to try to land it as near to the Kerbal Space Center as possible. Hopefully we can get the same comment. But here we go. Still quite a bit of fuel. So we're going to try to stop our marker right about that shiny spot. Actually, we're going to stop it before that. So now we fast forward. Oh. Well. That works. Kerbal Space Center is right there. I just know because I've played so much, so... You'll figure it out, too. It's on the African continent. <laughs> the one that looks like Africa. We're going to get it to probably about there. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see how much fuel I have. Alrighty. Well, I might as well just use all the fuel I have left. The atmosphere is going to slow me down to about there. I just, I don't want to splash down. I want to try to land on the land. We'll see how that goes, though. 
or at least clo like driving distance from the KSC. That'd be kind of cool. I've never done that before. I've never really tried before, but that's good enough. Oh, I went way too much, didn't I? Let's see if we can thrust. Looks like we should be over here. We'll just use the rest of our fuel and then fall. Ship's throttled up, so let's fast forward. There's the KSC right over there. 33 kilometers away. Well, that's pretty close landing, I guess. I can get there in about 30 minutes. Well, let's just hope that my parachutes don't get ripped off. And Jebediah is safe and home once again. 500 meters are gonna open. I don't think we're traveling fast enough for them to do any damage, but oh, apparently so. Sorry, Jeb. Well, thanks for watching, guys.